Hello and welcome again to Christian with K. Today we're going to learn how to solve the Riemann hypothesis using stickers and a copy filter. Okay, this one is relatively easy. Oh wait, ah, I forgot the tea. We're also going to use a tea bag, guys. I'm sorry. And a picture of the Holy Family. Okay. So, step one in proving the Riemann hypothesis. Put your copy filter roughly in an upright position. Okay, this is... This is important, you need to be roughly circular and, and flaring, kind of like, like a star or flower, uh, which is important because you're going to be using a passion fruit tea. You're going to put your tea in the center of the tea, of, well, not tea filter bag, um, but you know what I mean. You put it in the center of the filter. You're going to prop up a picture of the Holy Family on the back of the tea packet. This is important. Okay, so they get it very, very still. All right, now we're going to go to the stickers. I'm going to put the uh, phone down for a second while I grab a sticker. But I'm going to continue talking because I can do that. Okay, so now it doesn't really matter what sticker you start from. You're just trying to find the zeros of the Riemann hypothesis function, the Riemann zeta function, as they call it. Uh, so you just need any old sticker. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to show you what happens. So you get the sticker. Now, you have to gently stick the sticker to the side of the copy filter. Just, just let it gently stick on. It has to be gentle. You can't be forceful. You can't be aggressive. Just just gently, maybe just pinch it on. You want to, like, disturb the structure. Oh, it's all falling apart. Fucking stickers. Okay, well, the sticker might not, you know, be super cooperative. So, anyway, you have your sticker gently attached to the side, your first one. Okay. Now, I'm going to move the other stickers, and I'm going to show you. At this point, you need to do a calculation involving the ratio of the angle of the sticker to the tea bag. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You can get your little pen out. Make sure you have your book ready to be written on. Now, you see, um, if you know trigonometry, this is probably a lot easier. But we're just going to have to do it manually, so I'm going to hold this. I'm going, to, I'm going to intuitively draw the triangle that is implied by the ratio of the horn to the tea bag. Okay, so you know, there's, there you go. You got your triangle. Okay, so this is the triangle that you're going to start with. Now you're going to take another sticker. Again, it doesn't really matter what sticker it is. Just has to be some kind of sticker. Now, you're going to compute the angle of the triangle to the angle of the pen when you when you were drawing it. So you're going to implicitly draw a third dimensional line shooting off of the triangle. And where that line points to is roughly where you're going to put your next sticker. Again, gently, just, just gently. Put your sticker onto the coffee filter. All right, there you go. So, now you have two stickers on the edge of the coffee filter. Okay, you're going to repeat the process. You're going to draw the triangle from the horn again. Okay. All right, so now you have the two triangles in the line. So you're going to have to draw another line. So as you can see, you've formed the two main triangles, and you've formed a side triangle by connecting the lines from the horns versus the ratio of the horns to the tea bag. Okay, so you're close. You're very close to being able to prove the Riemann hypothesis now. Okay, just a, a few more steps. You're gonna get one more sticker. Okay, you're gonna get one more sticker and you're gonna, again, very, very gently place it on the edge of your coffee filter. Now, since the um, since the Riemann problem or the Riemann hypothesis problem is a very significant problem, so you know. Anyway, back to the you know back to the the triangles. So one more, and this one's a much different angle. If you'll notice, this one ends up this one ends up rather strangely. But luckily, we can still connect it with one more triangle. So we have a series of connected triangles that corresponds to the ratios of the horns to the T-back in the center of the coffee filter. 
And the next thing that you have to do, this is all you have to do now, is you have to assign a number between 1 and 1 1.2 to every outside line of the structure. So we'll do that. 1 1.0, 1.1, 1.111, 1.112, 1.117, 1.005, and so on. Once you've gotten all your numbers between 1 and 1.1 .1 written down, well, technically 1 and then 1.1 .1 with anything after that. Anyway, once you have those written down, you can perform the equation solution step. So, you're going to take the number of triangles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you're going to do 5x. Okay, write down 5x. That's the first part of the equation. And 5x, you're going to multiply by c. Okay, c is the speed of light squared. So 5x c squared plus the square root, and you're going to add up all the numbers from the triangles. So we're just going to assume that it all sums up to, well, I mean, in this case, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they're all at the same time. So we're going to say that it comes out to about 9, but you have to use um, a negative 9, because we're going to have to get a negative number, a neg or we're going to get the imaginary number out of this. So negative 9 plus um, the speed of sound times 2, or squared rather, um, to the power of the speed of light. Okay, so the speed of light shows up twice here. And you might wonder, what does the speed of light have to do with the Riemann hypothesis? Well, this is just how it turned out to be. You know, there's this uh, unreasonable, um, what, do you, what do you call it, correspondence or whatever between mathematics and physics. So, as it just turns out, this is, you know, the speed of light helps us solve the Riemann hypothesis. Okay, so once you've done this, you'll draw this symbol below. This is a super equal sign. You can make it a vertical equal sign if you just put an equal sign below that one. <laughs> and then you put a corresponding bracket to show that the information you're about to write is going to point upwards as well. Did you guys close that door? <laughs> I did. Okay. Is there somebody out there? No. Lost now, the next Darryl? step yeah. is yeah. to actually compute the equation. So 5x to the power of the speed of light squared plus the square root of negative 9 plus the speed of sound squared to the power of the speed of light, that actually equals a very important number in, um, in mathematics. We're going to call it e. It's very similar to the natural logarithm e, except, as you can see, it has this tiny little thing on top of it. It's a diacritical mark. That means you pronounce it e. Now, actually, this doesn't equal just e. It equals e minus 1. So if you have e minus 1, you can then proceed as follows. You draw another little squirrel. <laughs> not sorry, not squirrel, swirl, another little swirl facing downwards, and add another equal sign and another reverse. Okay, so e minus 1 is actually also important to something. It's important because it's equivalent to 1 plus t. And t is a very important number in, uh, in this context. T is the number of zeros that come after the 15th zero in the Riemann zeta function. And it just so happens that as a result of all those little triangles, we can see that t always is one half. And because t is always one half, that means the zeros of the Riemann zeta function are distributed in the way that we assume that they are according to the hypothesis. So, you know, Granted, this took about 10 minutes. That might seem like a lot of time just to prove one little theorem. But, you know, until you can prove this theorem, you're not going to know how to program an AI and all those sorts of other things. So now that you can do that, you can go create an AI. All right, and just in time for the new Terminator movie. Okay. Well, there you have it. This is Christian with a K signing off.